caravan is finally back under this beautiful tree. This is where it was for like two years, but then after the recent flood, um, we had to move over there into the sun, which was just so uncomfortable because the van obviously had no shade, which was good for the solar, but not good for the caravan, um, as in temperature wise. So yes, we're much happier being under here. There's something really strange, like I'm pretty sure there's a psychological term for it, but I don't know what it is, but it's where your, how can I describe it? It's kind of hard to explain, but basically when I move the caravan into say a different spot, it makes the caravan feel like a different place. It's sort of like, because when I'm in the van, I know which way north, south, east and west is and I know like where the sun sets and where it rises but when you move it obviously all of those kind of directions change inside the van so it kind of gives it a different feeling so when I was parked over there in the sun the caravan felt pretty different and now that it's back here it feels like it always has so life kind of feels like it's going back to normal so there's something else really exciting I want to show you guys and that is this hang on there it is, <laughs> that little dish in the yard. So that's actually Starlink and that gives me internet in the caravan. And the internet that I have now is just like dramatically better than what I had before. So previously I was with Telstra, which is like, I, in my opinion for this area, the most reliable provider. Um, and I would just use like my mobile phone that I'm filming on now and hotspot that to my computer and other devices inside. And that's how I had internet because obviously being in a van, I can't really like connect a phone line, which provides internet normally. I think that's how internet is provided in homes. Don't know, don't live in one. Um, so yeah, being like on my phone and hotspotting, that was the only way I could have internet. Whereas now this little dish is actually using satellites up in the sky. So it moves around automatically and like points up tracking satellites which I believe SpaceX launches up into the atmosphere. And then there's like one cord that runs into the house, well, into the caravan underneath the bed there. And then it connects to this other little thing inside, which I'll go and show you now. So the lighting's pretty, pretty bad inside the caravan. Now that we're back under the tree too, cause it's so shaded and dark in here. So this here, this like little thing, I don't really know the technical name for it, but that is what the dish outside connects to. And then we just simply plug it into the wall and then my phone, my iPad, my computer, people who visit all their devices just connect to that. And then we have really fast internet. So I'll screenshot the speeds because um, in my phone I can do like speed tests on the internet to see you know obviously how quick it is to upload things and download things so i'll do like a speed test and then put it on the screen somewhere here for you guys to see and yeah that's basically how quick the internet works it's changed my life honestly beforehand using my phone i had the most sketchy internet it would barely upload anything i had to actually drive in my car to a telstra tower park underneath and be that close to a tower to have really fast internet to be able to provide all my photos and videos to you guys. Um, for some of you who don't know, I work as a photographer, so I do a lot of like photo uploading. And yeah, so I used to have to like literally go somewhere else to do that. But now I can edit a gallery and then pretty much upload it straight away. So, but also upload 4K videos for you guys, which in the past I've only had to do high def because even though I'm filming in 4K, they wouldn't upload, like a file like that would have taken me literally a week to upload. That's how bad the internet was before. So if you guys live like in a mobile home or you've got bad internet phone reception where you live, I highly recommend checking out Starlink. It is kind of expensive. This is not sponsored by the way. I just, for me, this has honestly changed my life and I love it. So yeah, not sponsored, but it costs $140 Australian dollars a month here um, for me to get unlimited data, which I know is expensive, but because I run a business where I heavily rely on, you know, having a lot of internet and having quick upload speeds, um, this to me is totally worth it. So yeah, not sponsored, but highly recommended. We've got a chicken who is getting very confident <laughs> 
so confident they have started to try and like come inside which I'm not mad about I think they're really cute and I want them to feel comfortable and um, obviously I don't want them just coming in all the time and pooping everywhere but yeah I'm getting more comfortable with the chickens they're getting more comfortable with us um, I have some footage which I'll try and find that I had on Instagram of the chickens attacking and chasing Luna because she just spends all day literally following them around, kind of protecting them. Oh, they're chasing after Edge now. Hang on. They just ran all the way from me over to Edge. Poor Edge, he's actually frightened of them and he's sort of, I don't know why he's frightened of them. He just doesn't understand them, I suppose. Luna, on the other hand, she loves them. Um, and so sometimes they, because she like torments them a little bit, I suppose, they kind of associate Edge with that too. And then um, chase Edge. Here they come. <laughs> they keep going in their neighbor's yard and I'm trying to stop them because they've got dogs. And if they go in there into their dogs, they are seriously gonna get injured. <laughs> They're very cute though. As you heard me say in my last video that I'm actually going to start like filming more on my phone because being a professional photographer and videographer means that I'm a perfectionist when it comes to this stuff and because I've got like all the good gear I want to use it and like if I watch a video like this where I'm filming it on my phone I kind of feel like disappointed in the quality of the video that I'm creating and then I end up like not posting it or just not filming because I'm kind of overwhelmed at like how much effort I've got to go to, how much effort I've got to go to to be able to like actually film things to my standard but I really have to get over myself and just just start filming and yeah so inside the reason like it's harder to film bloody flies going around I bought this new dog food and it leaked so they can smell the blood and the it's attracting all the flies really gross yeah so inside the caravan is really low light as I was explaining before so now that we're underneath the tree and we have heaps of shade it's really great like for me and it's not too low light for general living but like when it comes to filming on a camera it's pretty low light and so I've always used like tried to use my proper camera to be able to handle the low light situations better but I find my lenses aren't quite wide enough a lot of trucks going past today <laughs> yeah my lenses aren't quite wide enough to be able to film in the caravan because obviously it's like such a small space so yeah anyway I think that filming on my phone especially like when I'm just doing vlog style videos like this where I'm talking to you or god so many flies <laughs> it's Australia um, it's better I like to just use my phone because it actually films really well it's got a 4k camera and can film at like 60 frames a second which if you guys don't understand what any of that means you don't really have to but all you need to know is that that's like pretty good and actually exactly the same as what my camera does but obviously my camera has like other settings that just make footage extra good that this phone kind of can't provide but yes as you saw i tipped water into the sink if you're new here that's because i actually don't have my plumbing completed in the caravan so i just fill up like a 20 liter jerry can and then you know tip that into like water containers to drink from or the dog's water or the sink and then as you saw earlier i showered not in the caravan so the caravan does have a bathroom that's just not finished <laughs> it's not finished because i don't really need it i've got the bathroom on the property where i live but if i ever move from this property which might happen one day like i might have to move then uh like i'll need a shower and yeah i'll have to like finish the shower in the caravan but until that day i kind of just used it as like a bit of a storage space so in the shower area i just like put my air conditioner which i barely use probably only a handful of times a year um because especially the last year we haven't really had that many hot days this summer like we've had a few days that are warm but nothing compared to like what we normally have here in australia um yeah but anyway just washing the dishes because 
being in a small space you really have to keep on top of them plus as you can see it's attracting all the flies edge likes to always sit in the hallway right under my feet So I do most of my cooking inside the caravan on this little gas cooker, which I do understand is not really supposed to be used inside, but I'm really careful by having this window open and just like never leaving it go by itself. Um, and I think I will actually like build some kind of station outside where I can use this outside instead and cook when we have good weather. But it's kind of nice to cook inside, um, even though I'm not supposed to use this in here. So don't do what I'm doing, but I'm just going to cook edges under my feet again. Edgy, can you move please? Good boy. Um, I'm going to cook just like a veggie packed bolognese sauce, but then I actually don't really like to have it with pasta. Um, I, I've got some potatoes and I'm actually going to cook too. And sometimes I mash the potato and kind of make like a shepherd's pie, but I'm actually going to do roast potatoes and kind of just make this random bolognese sauce full of vegetables um, with a side of roasted potatoes. Very random, but just what I feel like today. So that's what I'm going to do. So what do I need? I need this that is full of vegetables. So I've actually started getting a food delivery because obviously now that I don't have a car, it's kind of hard to buy in bulk um on a bike because i don't have much storage space and if i was only relying on my bike then i'd have to ride in probably every two days to get enough food for us that's if we want to eat like fresh fruit and vegetables because i'd only be able to carry about two days worth of stock on the bike so we've actually got a local lady who um and for a long time now i've actually wanted to grow my own fruit and vegetables and you guys may have seen like last year in one of my videos where I weeded a whole section of garden in order to prepare to grow my own fruit and vegetables and then get the chickens which I now do have um, but the fruit and veg idea kind of didn't work out the weeds grew back really quickly in that area that I weeded um, life got busy I didn't have time to like basically manage my own vegetable garden and just chasing all those flies in here which is kind of handy um and then i actually planted some seedlings but a mouse kept eating all the seeds and like i kept replanting them and then a mouse would come back and eat them so it wasn't really working out for me so instead i now have organized especially since not having a car to actually have food deliveries so i'm getting food deliveries for fruit and veg from a local business that shops at local farms so everything that I'm eating is all like locally sourced the only thing that I don't have in that order which I can I can order meat with her but I really like going to the local butcher because they've got really good meat there um, especially this mince it's like such good mince it's an ant on me um, and they've got beautiful steak as well so I just go in there and pretty much buy like maybe some chicken kebabs, usually 500 grams of mince for this dish that I'm about to cook and a steak. And then usually that'll last me like four days or so. And so then I ride in again every four days to get meat. So yeah, I'm just gonna start chopping up all of these veggies and get cooking. Oh, before I get cooking, I also wanted to mention, I've started ordering dog food for Edge and Luna. So for most of their life, they've just eaten like bickies from the local supermarket but Luna has like really bad allergies and Edge started to suffer from like pretty bad digestive issues so I changed their food to this like really healthy raw diet where it's got like you can pick whatever meat you want they've got mince like beef mince they've got chicken they've got camel kangaroo all these random different meats but I just get like the beef mints for them and it's got like all the different min uh, like nutrients that they need in their diet that they wouldn't get if I just gave them mints. And it's also got like chopped up fruit and vegetables in it as well. So they eat those patties each day. And I've started ordering that once a month. 
if you guys live in Brisbane, I'll link below like where I'm getting my food deliveries from for myself and the dogs, just in case you're interested. So where the dog food actually comes from is too far for me to ride. So I have to order it uh, and then I have to pay like a delivery fee. So because I've got to pay for the delivery fee, I order it in bulk, but then obviously I need a freezer. So I have started using the lady that owns the property. She's got like a really big freezer and heaps of space in there. So I've started putting like a month's worth of dog food in there and I kind of just get it out of her freezer as I need it. And yeah, that's how we're kind of managing without a car. So I do go in for like, you know, ride my bike into the shops to get bits and pieces like toilet paper, meat from the butchers, that sort of thing, and any other random like things that I might need. But apart from that, most of our um, food is coming from deliveries. So yeah, definitely manageable. this backpack which is what I take with me when I go riding I've got like all my bike tools uh, but first before I flip the bike over which is what I have to do to be able to change the brakes I think um, and to be able to like service the wheels and everything I have to take this uh, this off because if I tip the bike over being 30 kilos this isn't like it's strong but it's likely to bend so I'm just gonna take the basket off to be able to do that it's not often that I have to do this anyway, but I just hope that I can find zip ties later in my toolbox to be able to put the basket back on. Actually, I think that... Oh, these are reusable zip ties. Wow, what an idiot. I cut one off. So these zip ties have like a little hook thing that you can use to take them off oh wow that means I can reuse them all except minus one that I cut I forgot that I got those they come off really easy too but they stay on really well while I'm riding you'd think that they'd sort of jiggle loose but this one's a little trickier to get off. There we go. Full warning guys, I've actually never changed brakes on a bike before, especially this bike. So I kind of don't know what I'm doing, but I have watched a YouTube video where they kind of showed me what to do. So I'm going to give that a go. So I just realized I actually don't need to tip the bike upside down. Um, I might move this too so I can sit on the deck because there's some ants nests around me here But um, yeah, I don't have to take the wheel off. You just unhook this thing and then pull it off. So Yeah, fingers crossed this goes smoothly Okay 
let's hope I can work this out. So I've noticed when I'm riding, I can hear like this sound, like something's rubbing in the back tire. So I think it could be due to the fact that when I've put this tire back on after changing it, previously, this thing here, <laughs> I don't know what anything's technically called, but this thing here maybe is like rubbing a little bit or it is actually the brakes somehow rubbing because I haven't put it back together properly. I'm not sure. So I'm just gonna like take that off and then I'm sure I'll discover hopefully what's going on. But most of the tools on this bike are Allen keys, but I had to buy a different tool, which of course I don't know the name of again, um, but it's more of like a star shape. So I got like a whole set. They're kind of like Allen keys, just a different shape. I'm sure a lot of you out there will probably know what these are called, but it pretty much looks like a little star. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna work out like what sizes I need. I'm pretty sure there's a few different sizes. I don't know why they don't just make it all one tool that fits everything. Like why does it have to be all different shapes and sizes making you need like a bigger tool set? Kind of doesn't make sense to me, but anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna like figure out which ones fit where. I'll bring you guys a bit closer so you can actually see what I'm doing. Oh, and these are the brakes too. These are the packets of the, I'm hoping that these are the right ones. I asked a guy at a bike shop who doesn't actually even sell a Super 73. And I said, this is the bike I have, what brakes do I need? And he looked it up on Google and he reckons that it's these. So I really hope it is, otherwise I'm wasting my time. So we've got a few, I can't even remember which ones are supposed to come off. Oh yeah, I see. So there's a part of it. So it's this black thing here. A part of it is attached to this part of the bike. But by releasing these two, it'll take this part off. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a cable that runs to this as well, which has, I think, hydraulic fluid in there or something. Maybe, I don't know. Um, yeah, so I think that you take these two off first to pull it off and it will come off this thing. And then once I do that, I'll see what other ones seem to need to come off. So first one is finding the right size for those. Actually, you know what? That is an Allen key. And I bet you I don't have the Allen key for it. Oh, really? Really? That is so annoying. Like, why are they all different tools? Hmm. Too small. Too small. I do have more tools up in my shed. So it just means that I'm going to have to go and run around and try and find the right Allen key. But I'll check here first. All right, so I've got to go up to the shed. Looney, you wait there. Be back in a minute. I've tied them up to the trees just so that they don't wander off onto the road. But I'm um, just gonna go look in the shed and see if I can find the right size Allen key. Okay, I'm back and I found the Allen key. It was actually part of my tool set, which I'd left in the shed from when I was working on the bike trailer so yeah lucky I had that one hopefully I don't run into any more issues where there's tools I don't have that I need because that seems to always be something that happens to me and that's literally why I have a giant toolbox because when I was building the caravan you know I'd go to do some kind of job and I'd need a different tool so now I have this giant box full of all these tools that I don't use very often but do come in handy every now and then just like today Anyway, I'm gonna flip the camera around and point you guys at the bike so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, he's tight. <laughs> so loosen them that way a bit and then see if I can, yeah, do the rest this way.
do it with my hand. The neighborhood's really loud today. I don't know if you guys can hear all that. So, um, obviously I need to be really careful with these and put them somewhere where they're not gonna get lost. So, this comes off like that. And then inside here are the brake pads. So, I don't know what's going on here. Oh man, it's dirty, look at that. So I'm kinda, I'm not sure about the next step. I think, oh yes, an Allen key goes in here to loosen that and then you push down in here and then that's how that comes out and then you do the same thing to get it in. So, oh God, that's a really, after all that, I don't even think I needed these tools. What an idiot. And I bet you, oh, another Allen key that I don't have. What pain in the bum. I'm pretty sure I have to take, I definitely have to take that out. All right, walking to the shed this time to find the Allen key. Well, if you haven't yet noticed something about me is I'm not really that prepared whenever I tackle a, a job. I kind of just like start doing it and work it out along the way, which is exactly how I built the caravan. But of course I run into issues like this, not sort of paying enough attention to, you know, know exactly what I need and how to do things. So yeah, don't be like me. <laughs> but one good thing about this is that you do learn from your mistakes. And I think that's something that I do a lot learn from all my mistakes and you kind of learn things that maybe you wouldn't learn if you didn't make the mistakes hope that makes sense okay so I couldn't find a teeny tiny allen key but I am just going to use this star thing the tool that I did buy which then I thought I didn't need which now I've realized it kind of works as an allen key as well maybe this is like a universal tool where it's for the stars and can also work for allen keys I don't know, tell me if that's a thing. But it just worked. And it's not like damaging anything. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I'll put you back on the tripod and we'll keep going. So yeah, I put, so this is like a little Allen key thing. See how, well, I don't know if you can see that, but this is like a little star shape. That's a star shape, that's an Allen key. And that's what I needed to put it in. But I put it in there and it's, hang on, other way. It's working. So I think it could be like a universal tool. When I say universal, I mean like Allen key and whatever this star thing is. Anyway, so you just pull that out. There we go. Put that in a safe spot. And then apparently you get a tool, whatever like this, and sort of push it down pull it out wow um there's a bit of grass in there maybe that's the that's what was making that sound um i mean i don't know what worn brake pads look like i don't know like are these worn are they not i'll compare them to the new one in the packet Right, so these are the new ones. Let's hope it fits. I don't think I need this pin because the other one didn't have a pin. That's what, that's what I removed. So this is the new brake pad. I really hope that these fit. And then this is the old one. So, I mean, they're not really worn. I'm gonna put the new ones in anyway. And then I'll keep these as like backup because I think that, I mean, I'm assuming that a worn, um, I hope you guys can actually see this, but I'm assuming a worn down, like it looks pretty much, the same 
and I was assuming that if it was worn down like this little chunky bit here would be completely gone anyway let's put the new ones in and just see how we go so I played back the footage to see exactly how it looked when it came out and now I'm going to put it back in and hopefully this is going to be really tricky because I'm like only just holding it together there we go I think that worked pretty well so obviously I've got to line it up with the little holes, but let's have a look around here. So apparently you want a gap big enough for this to go in. I think that that's going to be good. I hope you guys can see. I'm kind of looking at, not at the camera, but looking at the actual break. So I think that that's gone in quite well. Let's get that other piece. So now we've got to put that back in. It's going to be tricky. Line it up. Okay, and then we need the tool. Wherever I put it. There he is. And then we're going to tighten it back up. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Don't know if that's the same thing for overseas as well. I'm assuming so, considering it's an American bike. Okay, so that has gone through the other side. Let's... Still a good gap there. I wonder how tight you can make it. I suppose, like, how tight it... Uh, it seems to only go so tight. But that moves in there a little bit which I don't know if it's supposed to. Maybe once it's sitting on this thing, it won't move. Right, so now we have to put it back over that. It's kind of a tight fit. I don't know if it's supposed to be that tight. Anyway, we will find out. I might watch one of those videos back again. Okay, so I'm just trying to get it on that metal thing and then line them up. This is actually easier than I thought it was going to be. All right. So we'll get one in a little bit. I actually really don't think I needed to change these brakes. Sorry guys, and I'm blocking the view. So it all seems to be sitting quite flush I always check for symmetry like some feeling to make sure it's flush and if it's not flush there then making sure the other side is the same I'm gonna have to do it like this like, this isn't boring for you guys <laughs> this is literally what I'm getting up to and this is the life living without a car because now this is my car and so I have to take really good care of it Okay, nice and tight. All right, well, I think that's it. I don't think I really need to do, I don't think I need to do the front brakes because it looks like I didn't even need to do the back brakes, but I have been riding this bike for like two years and I feel like the brakes kind of haven't, I don't know, they haven't been working as well as they should. It could have something to do with up here. I'm pretty sure these are hydraulic brakes. I don't really understand how it all works. I'm literally just throwing words around, but I believe there's like fluid actually up in here. And depending, I think from memory watching like a video online, if you pull this, it shouldn't be too far for your hand to naturally pull. So obviously depending on the hand size, you adjust this. It shouldn't come all the way in and it shouldn't be too hard but you can actually adjust the firmness of these by adjusting something on here i think don't quote me but i'm pretty sure that's the case anyway i'm going to go ahead and do the front brakes just so they're even
All right, so brakes are done. Now, there's another thing I need to do. The light on the front of the bike always rattles loose from going off road. And the other day when I was riding, the handlebars sort of started to shift forward. So I'm gonna work out why that's happening and then like tighten those as well. So fingers crossed I have those Allen keys. I have no idea if that's the right way to do it, <laughs> but it works. So what I'm doing now is just like moving the tires and trying to also hear if there's any like, like where I put the brakes on, where it's pinching this metal thing, before there was like a sound coming from there, which I thought had something to do with that. It could actually have something to do with the motor, which I'll find out in a minute when I turn it on and ride it around. But that actually sounds fine. There's no like, nothing's pressing the wrong way. And there's absolutely no sound coming from that one either. While the bike's flipped upside down like this, it's probably a good opportunity to clean underneath because in my last episode, you guys saw, I went through some mud and splattered all underneath the bike. And yeah, I didn't really get a chance to clean it under here the last time. So it definitely needs to clean. So this is how dirty underneath the bike is. And as you can see, there's like a lot of cords and there's like a little hole in there, which you don't really want to get dirty. But unfortunately, I'm pretty sure it already is kind of dirty in there. So I'm going to do my best to clean all that. So being an electric bike, I'm not sure about my new one that's coming because it's designed to go off road and it is somewhat weatherproof. Um, I actually contacted the company I'm buying it off and just double checked whether or not it's going to be okay to ride the new bike in the rain and they said yes but you can be extra safe by buying like a cover that can go over the battery area um, so for this bike in particular and I'm sure the new bike will probably be the same the camera just cut me off because my storage filled up so I'll finish what I was saying because I actually filmed a bit and then didn't realize it had cut off so I've just sprayed the bike with this waterless wash so I don't really understand what this is but it's designed for electric bikes so you spray it all on you leave it for a little while to soak in and then you wipe it all off and I was also showing you guys which you didn't see all these brushes that I also have which get into all different nooks and crannies in the bike to help clean all the muck off so yeah that's what I'm just about to do now so I think like getting into the brake system and cleaning all the muck off there and same down here um, and in the wheels will probably help prevent that sort of rubbing sound that I was noticing on the bike. Um, it could be the motor though, because I have seen with Super 73s that sometimes the motor, which I believe is in there, can sometimes start to make a funny sound. Um, and in that case, I usually just replace it from what I've seen on another YouTuber's channel. That is all for this episode. The bike is sounding better. Riding it. Mm, brakes seem pretty good, but I might adjust the handlebar thing like I was saying before, I'll work that out. I've got Miss Luna's <laughs> doing laps around me. There she is. Uh, yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you guys have any questions or wanna see more particular content on this channel, feel free to comment below and let me know. <laughs> This is how this is how I work her out. Anyway, I will see you in my next episode. Thank you so much for watching.